Hi, my name is Megan Moore and I'm a researcher with NOAA's Northwest Fishery Science Center at the Manchester Research Lab. Our group has been working with Long Live the Kings for many years now to research ways that we can help recover steelhead populations in Puget Sound. And so today I'm going to tell you a story, uh, just one component of our research about survival of steelhead in Puget Sound. Let's see. And it's a tale of danger and intrigue. <laughs> you can be the judge of that. But we, um, so I'm first going to start with a bit of background. Um, here's a figure showing marine survival of Puget Sound steelhead populations and the decline that occurred in the late 1980s. And you can see that the marine survival rate has stayed quite low in recent decades and we think is a major contributor to the um, lack of these uh, steelhead ability to recover. So our research focuses on the Puget Sound portion of that migration and looking at the, uh, amount, the uh, survival rate during that time. So to get a handle on that Puget Sound survival, we use this tool called acoustic telemetry, and we use this tool to track steelhead through Puget Sound. It involves implanting a transmitter in the body cavity of a steelhead smolt, and then tracking these individuals past these hydrophones that we uh, moor throughout the migration route. So you can see in red, those dots are the hydrophones that we put throughout the migration route of the steelhead. And, um, and then we can look at the survival of these steelhead. So we release these um, individuals at uh, river mile, uh, river kilometer 20, and then track their migration through the river, through the estuary, and then through Puget Sound, all the way through the Strait of Juan de Fuca, and then to the Pacific Ocean. Um, and using this technology, we found that less than 10% of the Nisqually steelhead smolts typically survive through Puget Sound. And this work really highlights the fact that migration through Puget Sound is having a big impact on the number of adult steelhead that return to spawn. So why are these steelheads experiencing such low survival? Well, there's increasing evidence both from our research and from research throughout um, the region that there's this increasing evidence that harbor seals are eating steelhead and thus having a huge impact on these small um, steelhead populations. So here's a picture showing the uh, harbor seals that are hauled out in the Nisqually estuary. You can see that there's a large number. These populations are, are, are thought to be at carrying capacity and they also have high daily energetic requirements, meaning they eat a lot of food. Now they eat a lot of different foods, but if they eat even a small fraction of steelhead, then that, that small fraction can translate into a large number of fish and thus have um, quite a big impact on these small steelhead populations. So to get a handle on how harbor seals are impacting the steelhead that are migrating through the Nisqually estuary, we moored uh, a number of these um, hydrophones throughout the migration route in the river and then in the estuary and out in the main basin to look at the behavior of these steelhead. And um, we also, to do this, we also used this special acoustic telemetry sensor tag that had a temperature sensor in the tag so that we could look at when that tag got eaten by a warm-blooded predator. So here's a figure showing what it looks like for a tag to be eaten. And it starts out with the blue uh, at the ambient river temperature. And then you can see this quick um, increase in temperature over a matter of 10 to 20 minutes where the tag gets warm to the point where it's in the belly. It um, becomes the temperature of that predator when it's in its belly. So using this technology, we were able to compare the behavior of a tag that had been eaten by a harbor seal to the behavior of a typical steelhead. So here this animation is showing what it looks like when a tag was eaten and that's um, depicted by the red and it's going to be in the green as well. And so these tags are being detected at the hydrophones that we have in the estuary that I showed in the previous slide 
And so these red and green tags are hot tags that have um, that are showing this back and forth behavior. And then the blue is going to show the blue and the yellow and the dark green are going to show what a typical steelhead behavior looks like. So you can see that blue tag just went straight out really quickly through the river and out to the main basin of Puget Sound. And there's going to be a yellow tag right here going out and then um, a final green tag showing that really um, linear behavior of a typical steelhead smolt. Whereas these hot tags that go back and forth are um, much more in, um, indicative of a tag that have, has been eaten. We never saw any of these tags that got hot or showed this back and forth behavior anywhere further along the migration route. So we think that this is, um, uh, these harbor seals are, are, eating the are eating the steelhead in the estuary and then um, kind of patrolling back and forth for a number of days until that tag gets kind of excreted. So what we found um, when we looked at the number of tags that got hot, we saw that 16% of the tags in, that were detected in the estuary got warm. And um, that's um, a fairly high chunk of mortality given the fact that this is only five kilometers of the total 275 kilometer migration that these steelhead have to cover on their way out to the Pacific Ocean. So, Really, this, this research is really highlighting the fact that um, ecosystem-based management is key to steelhead survival in Puget Sound. It's, um, the impact of these harbor seals is substantial. And um, it's not just harvest or hatcheries or habitat like we've seen in a lot of the other steel, or steelhead and salmon populations, but especially in the marine environment, it's these interactions between the steelhead and other components of the ecosystem that are important for their survival so that we really need to um, strive for a healthy, healthy balance in our ecosystem in the Salish Sea so that we are able to conserve these species that we care about. Um, so that's all I have today. Thanks for listening. And I'm going to stop this meeting.